This is the Changing Face of Ibiza panel hosted by a resident advisor. My name's Grego, I work for Resident Advisor. I, uh, I've lived and worked in Ibiza for many years and I look after the business Ferrari in Ibiza, Spain and Latin America. Um, I'll let the panel introduce themselves quickly. If we start with Shane. Uh, Shane Murray and I'm the promoter for the Ibiza Rocks Group which covers hotels, events, bars, diners in both Ibiza and Mallorca. I'm Guy Gerber, and we're having my night tonight at Pacha on Wednesdays. Uh, it's called The Wisdom of the Glove. Hi, I'm uh, Mark Neto. I'm representing IBZ Entertainment. I've been here for about 15 years, booking DJs, doing parties at Pacha, and now representing artists and trying to set up new venues. Hi, I'm uh, Jan Bisnem. I'm uh, representing Ushuaia Ibiza. And that's it. David Vincent, representing Sankeys Worldwide. That's uh, Steve Hume from uh, Pasha. Um, there isn't really any kind of set agenda or set topics we're going to go through. It's an open discussion. Um, I want to give the guys a chance to tell us what, what they've got happening this year. Um, Jan, we, I'm going to start with you. you. You're the only person who was on the panel with me last year when we did this, and yeah. it was called The Year of Change. Um, I think compared to last year, this year's more significant fundamental changes. Do you want to tell us from your point of view what, what changes you have and what's happening this year at Ushuaia? Yeah, uh, for us we have a few, few, few different uh, parties uh, getting, in, getting in the lineup of, uh, of Ushuaia in the big club. And uh, as you know, we're opening the new, the new tower, the new hotel, just uh, at the right side of the big Ushuaia to, to start to create uh, the kind of amusement park and resort that we want, uh, we want to build in, in Playa de Mbosa. Uh, we have a, a few new big uh, uh, parties getting in uh, the lineup of a big club, like I told you, which is, uh, for example, um, Locodice on Thursday, coming with a strong lineup. And uh, we are starting with Hans to a big underground party uh, every Saturday uh, during the day from 12 to 12. Then um, the tower is the big, uh, the big uh, incomer of our, our resort for this year. We are, we, are, we are using and building a new pool. Uh, with uh, seven parties a week too, like a free access, selected uh, entrance, and uh, we uh, will have Sasha on Sunday, uh, Defected on Monday, uh, we will have uh, Nervo on Thursday, Be Crazy on, on Wednesday, working with Louis Vega on, on Friday, and, uh, and uh, some Wally Lopez on, on Saturday. This is more or less what we are, what we are building for, for this year regarding lineup. Then uh, new restaurants. We have a Montauk. We are building a new, a new um, steakhouse uh, inside the inside the hotel in the tower, uh, and we are bringing a lot of new new things to the big club too. Um, I, I want to pick up on straight away. You mentioned the word amusement park. I don't think I've ever heard that mentioned in the Ushuaia plans. What what yeah. exactly is happening? Yeah, it was a little bit the idea at, at the beginning. Now when we spoke about doing an hotel with parties in and with a lot of different activities, restaurants and. The concept was a little bit building like, like a Walt Disney, a, a big amusement park for adults, uh, where you can sleep, when you can eat, when you can dance. And, and, and now with the tower, we are, we are increasing a little bit the, the space, and we are giving a little bit uh, more VIP uh, opportunity in, in what is the, the concept uh, of Ushuaia. OK, we'll, we'll come back and talk about some of the parties uh, specifically in a bit. Yeah. Um, Mark, um, Jan is looking after a new venue, um, Ushuaia Tower. You're involved with another new venue, Bomber. Can you, I mean, a lot of people here might not even know anything about this project. Can you tell us what's going on? Yeah, well, um, it's obviously down the road. I mean, it's uh, a new project. I think Ibiza deserves a, a new venue. Um, and it's been uh, tricky in regards to the, the, the change. Isn't always as openly embraced um, on the island as one would think, as, you know. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a new venue, whereby we can you know hopefully add to the, to the spectrum to the scope of what's happening in Ibiza. I think all change that we always talk about is is if it's well embraced and well received, it's a positive influence for the island. Um, and you know we we're meant to open now. Hopefully we're planning to open during the IMS. But with delays and what we've had to go through, probably looking to open towards the end of June. Um, but, you know, I think the, the timing couldn't have been better, really. The, the, the island is 
on riding the wave of the, 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 the impact and the success of, of our scene and you know it's part is being immersed into public into you know public culture so uh, the, the timing's perfect and you know it's just a matter of getting everyone on board and trying to get everyone all the institutions all the other venues and the island as a whole to embrace the change in new venues new projects daytime nighttime next door down the road whatever you know ultimately I think the, the, this, we're still riding the crest of the wave, so you know, that's the kind of change we're hoping everyone can embrace. So currently, as far as Bomber stands, you have the licenses, you're doing what you need to do, and we'll yeah, I mean, when, when are we looking for an opening? We're when? looking for an opening last week of June. You know, being a new venue and with new owners, you have to pretty much jump through hoops to fulfill and comply with all the administrative logistical and political requirements and obviously there's a fair amount of external pressure you know i don't think everyone is as open to embrace change or new venue you know ultimately we still live on an island and there are a lot of insular people living on that island and that approach in certain regards um is reflected in the way we've had to deal with administration the poli the, the, the political um, juggling that we've had to do so you know, it's by no fault of lack of intent or, or, you know, lack of support from the audience, but it's just, you know, normal teething problems when you are living in an island. And Ibiza Entertainment, what, what's, what's this company about? What's, what's um, who's involved and what, what the projects you're involved with? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a company we set up with, with Danny Whittle, and, you know, we, we have investment from, from Ron Burkle and Y Entertainment with, with Rick Stevens. I mean, it's a... It's a, a company whereby we can showcase what we have in Ibiza. Ibiza is always going to be the, 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 the focal point for our scene. Um, and having an American investor it enables us to build more international bridges. Uh, it's pretty much a, a labor of love for what we have going on. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a promotions company. We, we, we have the experience. We've booked DJs. We've booked we've booked Pacha for years. We have the contacts. We have the, the experience and the infrastructure to to program Bomber, to program any event that, that can come, and also being promoters and having worked with artists for, for so long, we're in a unique position to offer a grounded perspective to artists ex established, upcoming, um, and you know use our experience and our location as a vehicle to promote, nurture, represent new talent, book talent book clubs, run nights, I mean, it's just pretty much what we've been doing for so long, um, and it's repackaged, and it's much more marketable now. Okay. Uh, I want to bring Dave Vincent in from uh, Sankey's. Dave, you've gone through the process in the last couple of years of having a new venue, um, trying to establish it, going through all the hurdles that have been put in front of you. There's probably been some pretty difficult moments during that process. Um, but this year, you kind of you've got to the stage where you have like a full seven-day program. What, what's the philosophy behind what you do in Asankis? I think we wanted to take control of every element of the club. I think that the three nights that worked with all the stuff that we promoted in house, and we just looked at it and just said, you know what? Let's just take total control of the club. And I think that the type of the philosophy of where we're coming from is that we want to bring a lot of new artists and new brands to the island, and a lot of labels like we did with Dynamic last year. This year of Hypercolor, um, people like Dirty Bird, um, you know, Fuse, you know, just people that deserve it. And I think the type of venue that we are and the capacity that we are, we can do that. We can push these new future brands and new future superstars that can grow into bigger things. Um, tell us about some of the new nights, because you, as you said, you've got some kind of, you're giving, peop giving a chance to some new labels, some younger kind of brands and, and artists. What, what have you got that's new this year? Mondays, we've got Hypercolor, one best British label from DJ Magazine. I think, you know, we're really looking forward to a lot of the stuff that they're going to be doing. Um, if people are not aware of Hypercolor, people like, you know, obviously Mary Jane Coles cut her teeth into the label. Uh, people like Denson Pickup. Just, you know, they've just got a lot of, uh, an, an amazing stable of artists there. And Tuesday, obviously, got Di Dynamic, as, as you know. Wednesday's Fuse, we've got Enzo Siragusa. Seb Zito, I mean, you know, their parties in London, in Brick Lane were legendary. Thursday, Claude Von Stroke, another, another, another great move, I think. We've got Claude and uh, Justin Mine and people like Eats Everything. Then Friday, Flying Circus, which we're really excited as well. The audio flyers have been given a chance for first residency. We've got people like DOP, Benoit Sergio, Carl Craig, 
And then obviously Saturday Carnival, we've given uh, two young people kind of a, a real chance to think that could become future superstars, people like Finney Basson and um, William Cram de Joko, amongst like, the regular guests that we've been building over the last couple of years. And then Sunday, Viva Warriors, Steve Law had a fantastic year last year. And, you know, Steve and, you know, I think there's going to be great things from Darius Sirosian this summer. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, Neon Knights. I mean, I know that was kind of one of the most talked about parties last year. Uh, you must be glad Solomon's back for a second season. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, I think we're both glad. I think, you know, he knows what Sankey's gives him and we know what he gives to Sankey. So, you know, why should he go? Well, well he did go, didn't he? He went to Pasha as well. What, how do you feel about that? Well, he was always planned at Pasha last year in any case. He's just extended his dates at the end of the day. And, you know, we'll borrow him to Pasha. It's no problem. Uh, so, Steve, Dave's lending you Solomon on Sundays. Um, <laughs> can, you, can you explain, can you explain um, why there's been so much wholesale change at Pasha this year? Because there's been a kind of fundamental shift in how things are done. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks, Dave, for Solomon. You're welcome. That's okay. So I beef United this summer. <laughs> um, yeah, we, um, like Dave said about taking control of the club for yourself. Um, there was lots of um, other, other promoters that were inside the club and directing the club, and, you know, the family decided it's 40 years old and they want to take control of the club themselves and um, program their own nights and so that's what we did we had a we had a clean out not for any reason that there was nothing wrong with any of the DJs that played there everybody was great but uh, they just wanted a freshen up and that's what we did um, what, what I'm most interested about is that um, obviously it was working at Pasha because the club was always full and financially it was working so I mean what, why, why would you change that yeah, because you've got to think about the next 10 years as well. You know, not just like next year or whatever. We have to look at some of the artists that are on the way up and some of the artists that are at the top. And people like David Getter had no intention of leaving ever. So that was a no-brainer to keep him. And um, some of the other nights that we've got now, we want to invest in things over the next five, 10 years. So it's basically that. Okay, so do you want to explain some of the kind of new, big kind of changes in philosophy, maybe musically, that have... Yeah. Well, the in. main thing was just about taking control again of, of the nights ourselves and programming them ourselves, which we did on a Friday, and we've done, which we've done on a Friday and on a Saturday, and on the Mondays as well. And uh, with Guy, you know, on Wednesdays, you know, um, we went out there and, and kind of, we was listening to what was going on, on the, in, in the island and around the world, musically-wise, and uh, we wanted to have a nice even balance between both the sounds that are popular right now. And uh, so we went out and targeted the people that we wanted to keep and the people that we wanted to uh, come on board with us. And we did that. Okay, um, let's bring Guy in on, uh, on this. Wisdom of the Glove, what, what's that all about? Um, yes, it's a, it's a long, long story. I don't know if I should tell everything, but um, my idea was, I don't know, to do everything Everybody was taking themselves too seriously, and I thought maybe if you do something a little bit less serious, and in a serious way, and yeah, I can tell you, I was like wearing this glove. And basically, I wanted um, Pacha were interested to do something with me, and at this point, I didn't know about all the changes. Um, and I remember telling my manager, I mean, I told her I was in this jungle in Mexico, and I told her, Okay, I would like to have my own night, um, but Pacha say, okay, cool, but what's, what, what's the concept? What's the name of the night? And I said, the wisdom of the glove. So she said, there's no way I'm telling them this name. I said, no, that's <laughs> the name, because I knew already with the name, already it's like, kind of like weird. And um, I don't know, I wanted to do something I think that if I were doing the same thing in a club that is, I don't know, a little bit more underground, it would, would be very potentious because I'm bringing this artist and all this concept, it's like potentious. But in Pacha, actually, it's the most, I don't know, most playful and most, um, I don't know, they embraced the, the fact that let's do things that are like um, over the top. And and my first idea was that, um, like my first, 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 first idea before we had like a concept, I said, 
I want to sell one glove, because how did I actually sell these things to Pacha? I told them, okay, I want to put, I don't want any merchandise, I don't want anything. I want to have one glove, and I want to sell it for $150,000. So it would be no diamonds, no gold, just like a simple glove, just to put it as if, like, I don't know, not that it's me, but as if like Damien Hurst is coming to Pacha, just to see like, you know, how people will react to all these, uh, all these ideas. And I think that people are talking about the changes in Ibiza. I think the first thing that just the fact that somebody said, okay, let's, let's change, because in the end, it's still nightclubs, DJs playing in a nightclub. It's still, I mean, maybe someone like me have his own night, but it's still most of the time the same names. But just the fact that the people said, let's change. So I think, I don't know, already the change starts in, people's, in the people who comes. It's already in their mind because it's like so much excitement. Uh, and yeah, we're bringing, we have the Chromatics, which is like a real like indie band. We had Little Dragon, but in the end it got canceled. We have, I can't really announce it, but I think we can announce it already. We have like Nicolas Jar and Fortet playing. And at the same time, like I would say, every single person on the lineup, it's someone that I think his music is amazing and it's like great DJs that all of them I would say 100% of the people who play never ever compromise about the music and they always like try to challenge and try to play a little bit different and yeah Pacha actually you know I started speaking with them and it's first they gave me like full create, create creative control but at the same time they helped me a lot with their ideas. Uh, we have like uh, another thing that they said, okay, I didn't, I didn't want to have so much visuals in the club. I, would, I prefer to have, um, try to bring it like how it used to be. So, which I don't know how it used to be, but just the fact that I said, let's bring it back to how it used to be 30 years ago, as if I was here. Um, so we have like a lot of, the old, most of the decoration, is, the decoration is actually built. So you have like a lot of spirals moving. And it's kind of, I wanted to have something a little bit creepy and uncomfortable and at the same time great music um, right now it's not that creepy it's still very very i don't know very inviting but i promise it make it more uncomfortable when the season <laughs> when the season involved yes. um i want i want to just i mean you mentioned you didn't kind of know about what was happening at apasha changes wise did you i mean did you have a reservation in terms of because i mean let's be honest pasha had a history has had a history of mainly commercial, kind of big EDM so, artists yes. there. So, I mean, you must have had to think twice about it. Okay, so first, last year, I played, like, e I literally play everywhere, and I think the two sets that I actually enjoy the most, just, just to play, were actually when I play for Pete in Pacha. So just like, you know, I just like the dance floor, how it, how, it, how it was. But I admit, at the beginning, I wasn't so sure. I was like, okay, Pacha, with all these things, and this and that. But after... I was like, really for the concept, as I said before, if I would do the same thing somewhere else, the fact that I get, uh, I don't know, uh, Sonia Munir, or like, I think most of the names people don't even know them, just the fact that they are in Pacha, the context make it much, much better than I would put them in any, anywhere, anywhere else, because it's already kind of exciting just to see how these people will, will react, and I could book, you know, I could book some people that I know 100% break the room, then they're like, you know, bomb the place, but I wanted to create some kind of like, like a dialogue that sometimes I'm sure, let's say some of the VIP crowd will hear this thing and they'll say, what the fuck is that? But it's more like, you know, it's more like, a, more like a happening rather than just like a party. It's not a rave, it's not gonna be a rave. I think um, there is so many big parties here that, you know, they're already, there are so many, so also you know I didn't want I didn't I didn't want to have another one because uh, all of the, all of these parties are great. It's not like it's not like you know that this one is bad and let's do something like the same thing but better. Um, and Pacha also it's like you know it's like a labyrinth, so it's also kind of like feed the concept. It's not like just like one area. You can go to the terrace, you can go out. It's in the center. Um, yeah, yeah, it's thick. It's, it's, it's nice. I'm, I'm actually very happy about okay, it. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> Shane, you've been waiting patiently. Um, you're kind of a little bit the odd one out, I think, here, because you're not kind of one of um, the purely electronic main clubs, and you've, you've kind of changed Ibiza, and in, in Ibiza Rocks has changed Ibiza in its own right 
um, down the years. Um, it's, I mean, do you, how do you find yourself uh, situating the brand and where do you feel you sit on a kind of panel like this in terms of um, where Vitorox is and its objectives and how it operates? Well, maybe it's probably, if I tell you what we're up to this year, it's probably takes what you said and sees how we, we sort of progressed our place on the island. I suppose when we started eight years ago, we were kicking against what was the norm here. So it was about getting inspired by live music and festival culture that was kind of breaking through Europe and, and not seeing that being represented here. So we were going to, to gigs and going, wow, where is this energy on the island? So it was very much about I mean, being contrary. But then as we grew and you know the size of our venues grew and then it became obviously the Ibiza Rocks Hotel opened five years ago, we realized that our audience who was coming over to the island for the first time, actually we were bringing a rock, you know, a kind of a rock and roll festival audience, but this audience of, you know, we call it the shuffle generation, they're not so tribal anymore about what they want to listen to, so they don't expect a week of rock and roll shows, they don't expect, uh, at the same time, they're not going to go to a club every night, so it was, uh, it was a, us kind of understanding what our audience wanted, and, and also as well, whenever we launched sort of indie music was really huge, I mean, five, six headliners at every festival were, were bands with guitars, it's just not the case anymore, and a lot of the, 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 the really great bands that were coming through we're being inspired by electronic music. So if you look at our lineup now this year, 16 shows, it's, it's pretty broad and diverse. If you put it all together, it would look like a, a pretty broad festival lineup. So some of the sort of standout shows, um, we've got Jake Bug opening in a couple of weeks time. He's a great singer songwriter. It's just gonna be him and a guitar. Um, something that Ed Sheeran did really well last year to a full house. We close with Folds who, who for me, sit as much in you know the world of club culture as they do in, in, in live music um we've got Sheik and now rogers coming which is going to be a very special moment for the island and i think we're probably set up better than anyone else to deliver that show um properly from a production point of view from an audience point of view um so you know as well as having the, the big sort of festival bands like biffy clyro coming back i mean Biffy are headlining Reading and Leeds, which is 70,000 people, and we're at 2,500 capacity, so we punch above our weight with that because Ibiza delivers a great experience for them. But in respect of sort of where we sit within the island now, I mean, we realised that our audience weren't just coming over for our shows. They were coming over to go to all the club nights of the people and the promoters here today. So we last year started a night called We Are Rockstars. I don't know why we called it that, but because it's not really <laughs> full of DJs um, and it, again it wasn't us trying to do something that was being done very well by people who are probably far more established in, in dance music culture than we are but it was our take on it um, stuff that we got inspired by and so you know we were the first people to bring even when we started reclaim the dance floor in 2009 we brought Chase and Status to the island for the first time we brought Disclosure to the island for the first time last year so I don't think with our venue capacity and with our audience being younger, we can't charge those kind of prices that the other bigger clubs can have. We don't have that revenue-making facility of the VIP facilities. So what we do is we try to channel interesting, cool new music and a young audience. And to be honest, maybe it's kind of a feeder system for the rest of the island because they start off in San Antonio and eventually they might go over to Platte and Bossa or they get the villa in the, in, in the country. But... That's, that's the way it's evolved, but definitely at the heart of what we do is, is music, but travel and bars and diners, that's just a kind of a lateral extension. Mm -hmm. We don't get the music right and we don't do what's right for our audience. I mean, one of, um, like, after Ibiza Rocks had come and done their thing, uh, probably a testament to what you did over the last few years, there's been a spate of live concerts, events, PAs, uh, Usher, Ushuaia, all sorts of people, uh, Pasha, Mark's had all sorts of uh, rappers and mm -hmm. half the hip hop world there doing stuff with David Guetta, um, not to mention Space having rock bands and De La Soul, you know, the, the list goes on. But there seems to have been kind of a bit of a backlash to that because uh, I think that Space aren't here to speak for themselves, but they've kind of left that kind of live kind of angle behind a little bit. Yeah. I it's mean, expensive. <laughs> it's really, really expensive. You've got, to get your, you've got to get your model right, you know, because, um, got to deliver solid production because you've got to give the audience a great time and you've got to give the band a good time in terms of production because if you don't deliver that they won't come back simple as that and that's we've always really really heavily invested in that year on year 
So our expertise comes from putting on live events. It's not from running a club seven nights a week. So we know what we're good at. And I think being consistent in delivering that, you know, we've worked the venue. I mean, this year we've done quite a lot of investment into the staging, changing of that. So year on year, you know, we're upgrading, we're getting better at what we do, and that's reflected in the, you know, the size of the artists and the breadth of the artists who come to see us. Uh, Jan, Oshawa is kind of very much set up to deal with live, big live shows. Um, what, what have you got planned this year? Any random gossip? Yeah. <laughs> We have, we have regarding production, for example, as, as he, he was saying, no, we we now in BDM need to, to produce a lot and to and to build big big productions. Uh, for this year, we have, as I told you before, three new parties in the in the big club. One uh, is uh, Loco Dice on on Thursday. Luciano is moving on Tuesdays, so we we, we did this swap. Um, the other one is Pete Tong uh, coming to host uh, Friday night with a big 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 huge uh, lineup with a name. Uh, the party will be called Le Grand Bazaar, which is like a big mix, uh, big mix of a of lot of different styles of, of, of music. But we'll have from uh, Hot Nature, Demi Jones, to, till Calvin Harris, Passing by Fight Boy Slim, and, and a lot of different styles of, of music and big, big uh, production too. And then we, as, as we were speaking about uh, EDM and underground music before with, with Guy, I think that um, EDM is getting a, a bit underground for this, uh, this year at Ushuaia, we'll have a different balance, not so maybe mainstream and and and, uh, and uh, commercial, and then we're going a little bit more underground with these three days, uh, and the launch of Hans on on Saturday, which is a, a kind of uh, underground rave uh, uh, daytime party uh, every Saturday, and uh, and incorporating uh, uh, local dice on Thursday. So we'll have Luciano dice and and Hans. Okay, so I mean, I mean, if we look at it from that point of view, we have Dice, Luciano, Ants, which has a whole host of kind of underground, if you want to call them, yeah. that, artists. Yeah. Um, I, it kind of seems to be a bit of a paradox that you have these artists playing in a venue like Ushuaia, which, let's be honest, is kind of, it has a VIP focus a lot of the time, the prices are high. How, how do you sit those two together? Yeah, I think, I think there's not any commercial or not music. You have different kind of, of style of music, but you haven't got... Uh, somebody's commercial and when he's selling a lot of tickets, uh, uh, somebody's underground, like Richie, I don't think you say, is underground or not? If he's selling a lot of tickets, is he commercial or not? So I think that everybody is commercial when he sell tickets. And, uh, and there's different style of music. Yeah, you can have trance, you can have underground music, you can have uh, commercial music, you can have more EDM style, you can have whatever style of music. But I think when we start producing, doing big production and selling tickets, it, it's something commercial because you're selling. So I think the word commercial to, to, there's a mix you now with underground and commercial music and underground and commercial in, in the real life. No, I think there's. there's okay, uh, Dave, what, what does it mean about the scene when um, an artist like Loka Dice or Sasha is this year playing at Ushuaia but could quite easily play at Sankey's, which has a completely different philosophy about the way it approaches everything? I think it's all good at the end of the day, you know. I think um, them type of artists are particularly suited to play at Ushuaia and it gives us the opportunity to play even more forward-thinking artists, you know, with the utmost respect to these guys, you know. They've been in the scene, they've been great um, ambassadors of our scene, and they've been on it for many years, but where Sankey's is going is we're trying to find people that will be the next ambassadors in 10 years' time, you know, so... Um, it, suits, it, all, it all kind of works together at the end of the day, yeah. You know, if Sasha plays at Sankey's, it'd be great. If Loka Dice plays at Sankey's, great, but I think they're better suited at Ushuaia, to be fair. Um, tell us about, um, I know you've made some changes at the club this year, what can you tell us about what's happened? Well, we've got, um, now that I've shut down Manchester, I can be a lot more creative. I Why did you shut down Manchester? Because just like to, to, to try to run two clubs at once and manage two people internationally is practically impossible. And I know if you look at the, the Pasha kind of like um, framework, their home base is Pasha and they franchise worldwide. And that's the type of thing that we're going to be aiming to be doing over the next you know, the next few years, which we are going to be doing in Miami, New York, and there's, there's other places going on, but I just can't own and manage and promote two clubs at the same time. You know, you put your energies in one, and the other one falls, falls away side, and since I left Manchester for two years, it wasn't performing as well as it could have, so I just feel that this year is a, a big year for Sankeys, and I think that we just need to be at our best, and I, you know, I needed all my production team and all my production over, and I brought it all over, and I, I just think, you know, the whole team and everyone at Sankey's is ready for a big season, you know? Um, how do you feel generally about the idea of having seven nights a, a, a week, party seven nights a week? Because, I mean, traditionally in the B3, it wasn't always like that. Clubs did close on certain nights. 
Now it kind of is the norm that every club is open every night. Um, how how do you think that? I mean, in terms because I know last year you had three nights which were kind of as you mentioned before, which were more successful, but there were other nights you were open. How are you going to deal with that this year? I just think at the end of the day, you know, you just need to get on with what you need to be getting on, not worrying about what everyone else is doing. And, you know, you just need to work hard. And if you work hard and you believe in what you do, then it works. And you create enough positive energy in what you're doing, then it's going to work at the end of the day. I think there is, you know, from what I'm hearing from statistics, you know, I beef is 20% up this year, you know. There's going to be a lot more people on the island, you know. It's all the nights going to be packed at the same time. No, of course not. But there's going to be a lot more people, and especially with the explosion of dance music stateside and worldwide, you know. Like what Jan said, you know, I mean, like all this thing about underground, you know, Sankey's underground, you know, people call us an underground club, but is there really an underground? There isn't really. Underground is something that's not seen, you know? And when you're putting posters everywhere and you're advertising on Resident Advisor and, you know, and you, you know, you're putting billboards, that's not underground. It's, for, it's just forward, few, forward, few, forward, forward thinking music that eventually becomes commercial. And I just think that's what's happening, you know? But is that, is that just an epitome of where, how the scene is that it has to be like that? Does, I mean, does it have to be like that? It doesn't have to be like that, but it is the way it is. At the end of the day, can you have an underground club in, in IB for the underground clubs in IB for the ones who are back in people's villas in the cave, you know? That's an underground. <laughs> no, but it's true, though, you know? Um, <laughs> Mark, I wanted to give you the chance to tell us about what you actually have at Bomber this year. Well, I mean... Um, Obviously, we've, we, we're working with Luciano. We do Luciano on Sundays. Uh, we do Defected. We're going to do Defected on, on, on Saturdays. Um, working closely with Mr. Marillo. I mean, I think a lot of these are, are established nights and they've done their time in Ibiza. And to go back to what we were saying about, you know, the labels of commercial or underground, I mean, the fact of the matter is, on, on a Monday or Wednesday night, there are a phenomenal amount of people going out and, you know, the night time and now the daytime is pretty much the lifeblood of, of the tourism in Ibiza. So, you know, it's something to be celebrated. And, you know, yes, there's more than enough business for clubs to open seven nights a week. And what dictates that isn't the club, it's the audience. It's the punters. The fact of the matter is that kids save up their money, they come here for their week, and they want to be entertained every night. And it's up to, up to us and the venues and the club owners and all the institutions to facilitate those kids coming and having a good time, you know? And I think that's what will keep Ibiza on the, on the map is, you know, we, can, we have a social responsibility, and we can develop it and evolve and change, but ultimately, people pay their money to have a good time. And um, that's what we try to, try to maintain with our ethos of book, book, in, book in night. Um, Guy, I, w I wanted to ask you, I mean, one of the, one of the other changes this year, f as, as far as I can see it, is that um, unlike many years that have gone by where a DJ was exclusive to one place, they only played there and that was it. Uh, we have local dice playing every night of the week at different places. They all seem to be um, Dice, Corolla, Carl Cox, Jamie Jones, they're all kind of interchanging between each other's nights. Um, the, have DJs just got too powerful now? They, they kind of call the shots. Um, actually, we, we had a lot of problems with getting DJs from, uh, from other places. And it's funny because everybody else is like, you know, do share DJs. And we actually um, encountered a lot of difficulties of getting like people at the beginning. But, you know, they say that um, obstacles are like a source of inspiration. And in the end, it's actually really helped me. You know, I couldn't have this guy, I couldn't have this guy, I couldn't have this guy. And in general, you know, I just, you know, I just, you know, I just wanted part, not to party, but it's just like, you know, I don't know, like to go and like, it's like all these politic games. So it's just like I had to find a lot of names that are not belong to particular, particular brand. And yeah, and in the end, I, I so that it's more interesting. I just, I just, I just wanted to create something that, let's say, next, I don't want to every year to go through this game again and you can have this guy or maybe he should play for you here and then maybe he'll play for you there. And I just, I think it was more, um, not, not that it's, fr yeah, if we'd say, yeah, it's like a very fresh lineup. Most of the names, they're not that known. They're, they're very good DJs. Um, and, uh, but honestly, I. I, 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 I'm very happy that other people do play for other brands and uh, they just like share because it's like, you know, there's the different people every week. I mean, a lot of people live over here, but a lot of people come every week and they change. And 
people, the, the setups of the clubs are sometimes very different. So a set that, let's say, uh, Loco Dice will play in Cocoon, it's not the same set he's going to play in Ushuaia. So, yeah, I think it's good that people, you know, move from a place to another. I, I, I have seen a shift in, in the, the, the way that the, that the artists maintain the exclusivities. I mean, compared to 10 years ago, a, a resident DJ would play every Monday night in a certain club and he wouldn't move by hook or by crook and you wouldn't dare ask the owner of the club to let him play anywhere else. And with the advent of Ushuaia and daytime clubbing, I mean, content is king. And... You know, as much as the clubs think they have the ultimate power, it is the artists that have more power now than ever before. And that's what the kids are paying the money for. That's what they want to see. And if you're here for a week and, you know, you happen to see Luciano playing at Ushuaia and you see him playing at Bomba or whatever, you know, ultimately, guys, right, you, it is a different experience. They vary the sets. But, awesome. but, you know, the days of the clubs ultimately dictating the terms for the DJs are over. But also, but also, sometimes people want to see them this night, and on other night they want to see someone else, so they can see him on like this. And then the same, and the, the same people will go to another club. They're not going to go every time to the and, same. And club. ultimately, the, the, the DJ's strength is based on the audience. So it's the clubbers that have the power. It's 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 the people buying the tickets on the door, going in, into the into the venues. They're the ones that maintain the power. They give the power to the artists. And now, you know, pretty much any of your top line DJs, they, they don't have to ask the permission from their club. Obviously, the key to all of this, I believe, is cooperation. Whereas before, the venues would try to fight and protect and, you know, stop their arts from playing with each other. The, the real key to longevity would be cooperation, whereby the venues can work together and coordinate where their artists play. And I think once all the venues can embrace that ethos of doing business, it'll be a much better scene for all. Like I said, I mean, it helps that obviously when I cut my teeth in IB for 15 years ago, the first year I was working for Ministry at Pasha, you was working at Renaissance at Pasha, Shane over there went to the same university as me, we were on the same course, so... <laughs> Yeah, I you mean, know, look, all we, we, we've all cut our teeth here, and, and you but, know, but having worked in different <laughs> venues and worked for different owners, the, 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 the overriding sense that you get nowadays is, is that, you know, the clubs are wonderful platforms to showcase great talent and they offer a great experience, but what drives the, the kids in and out is the content they put on, and that content is dictated by, by, by the clubbers. And if they could coordinate that content better, I think it would, in the long run, offer a better experience and better value for, for clubbers. Okay. Um, I mean, that, that uh, exclusivity, I mean, you mentioned it was uh, kind of an owner kind of thing, that the clubs, I mean, when you say the clubs, do you mean the owners of the clubs? Yeah, I mean, I even remember there was a day when the Disco Association used to agree between each other that they would not let any of their residents go to the other club. I mean, it, it's not a viable or sustainable system of doing business. How can competitors come together and say, your content... I, we will not try intercept or, or, or use other people's content. Ultimately, people that have were promoters or DJs are entitled to go where they want, you know? A few old ones are still doing it. They're trying, yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, that's the primary change that we, 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 we're talking about here is that, you know, the, there has been a shift and it's not just dictated by, uh, you know, a handful of established venues. Now, you know, there's more power in the hands of the clubbers. There's more power in the hands of the artists. And, you know, in the long run, I think it's a good thing for the island. Steve, did you, when you were booking the programme for the Pasha this year, and as we, as we discussed, it's kind of a wholesale kind of clean slate and you, you started from scratch almost, did you, how did you deal with this issue when you, when, when you came across it? No, I mean, um, when we first started booking DJs, you know, um, you know people were a bit sceptical uh, because we was changing everything uh, wholesale. But um, what we found pretty quickly was that, despite despite anything else that was being said or what people uh, may have thought, most of the artists what actually was being, wanted what to was, come. What was being said? No, we just had the, there was a there was a general feeling that you know the artists didn't want to be in Pasha. Pasha had, uh, had become too commercial. And when we actually found we found it really the opposite. Lots of DJs actually did want to come in. Um, the agents were very open to us. Um, it wasn't so difficult to program the club. The, um, <laughs> you know, basically between October and January, we were kind of done. You know, so, um, and we were starting from scratch. You know, so, uh, 
it was it's interesting to me that the template that you have at Pasha is kind of still even though there's been a big change it's it's still very similar it's still based around kind of big name DJs is it I mean you know DJs are DJs that are all big these days I mean you know everyone's famous I, I don't know to me it's about putting programs together of uh, a lot of good stuff that all makes sense together so that the whole experience um, should be good um, you know, every DJ has got an agent, every DJ has got a manager. I mean, everyone's got a value. And um, we've got lots of DJs in there that are underneath the tip of the iceberg. We've got the ones on top, of course, you know, um, every, all these clubs have. But um, there's lots of talent underneath that that's in there. So really, the template isn't, let's have the big DJ and that's it. We've got some big DJs, which is great, because they're part of the scene and they want to be in the club. And we want them in the club, and the public want them in the club. So it's just common sense, really. Guy, you know, if David Gettin wants to play in Pasha, I want him in. Guy, you if Solomon wants to come in Pasha, I want him in. Okay. Guy, you mentioned before you said to your, your manager or your agent you, you wanted a residency. Yeah. Why, why did you want a residency? What, what's so important to you as an artist to have that? Uh, because I think in general, in general, when you play, first, as a creative person, I think just playing, it's like sometimes it's not that it's like it's not boring, but I just want it to be, you know, to have like when it's your own, your own night. First, I don't know, yeah, like um, I don't know, you bring, you bring your friends, you can do more. I don't know, you're in charge of the flyers, you're in charge of the of the visuals. Um, it's something that I, you know, in some places that I that I um, that I. That I played. Okay, didn't say it was bad, but it wasn't like my exactly the thing the, the, the way I wanted it. Um, I love the island. I wanted to live here, um, and it's. I think it's also. I it's something that I think was missing, and is still missing in Ibiza. That used to be here. It used to be the track of the summer. That song is like you know that everybody talk and later they make a career of of someone. And I would say last time it was maybe it was 2007 or 2006 that it was this track that everybody was talking about. It was like in Ibiza, and right now it's just like it's just like you know it's a lot of beats, a lot of like you know people come, they break the place, but it's the music part. The brands are very successful, the parties are very successful, but it seems like what is the sound of Ibiza right now? There is no sound. There is like sound maybe of Circo Loco, but it's like you know that particular beats, and I. I wanted to, it's not, I don't know if I can make it, but I want to create something that brings also back the music when producers, when they sit in the studio and they can imagine, okay, if I'm gonna play this track, how it will sound in that particular setup. Um, and this, I thought, could, be, could happen only if like also you bring people that, you know, very, more like music lovers and not just people that comes to party. And, uh, and yes, I thought I think that right now, um, with the alignment that we have, I'm not saying that this particular night. I just, you know, I think it can inspire everyone to book people. You know, not just you know, not just because of the beats, also because of you know the music they make. And uh, that was something very important for me. Yeah, I mean, Shane, guy makes the point about how uh, things have become separated, and there's been this fragmentation of you know, the scene musically, if you like. Obviously, Ibi the Rocks are kind of a, a one extreme of that. Um, do, do you think, think so? Well, I was going to ask you, what do you think? Well, I, th I think maybe it's reflected, maybe you said, Guy was saying that, you know, there's a Circo Loco signed, or there's, you know, the, the, there's a sign defined by a certain DJ or something, but I don't see that in the audience, because you know, Mark was talking about it earlier. The audience are, are really broad in, in who they want to see and, uh, and what they want to do. They might have only a week or two weeks. So I, I think as well, I mean, we're called Ibiza Rocks, but you know, our, our music policy and what we do is, is much, much broader than that. So I think Ibiza has diversified. Um, maybe some people just got really good at what they did and, and made their own sound. Um, but to be honest, I think if you look at sort of the lineups and, and the way that they mix these, you know, this year, I think, you know, Scream, who's played for us for the last three or four years, is now kind of moving in. You know, I know he's playing for Dave, I think. So, I mean, a couple of years ago, not many people who played with us would have been playing at somewhere like Sankey's. So I think that whole world 
uh, there's the, the, the sets are broader. I think you know because maybe we're all, you know things are a, a bit in the shit from a recession point of view. Music's getting bouncier and lighter and fun, and therefore DJ sets reflect that, and and maybe that's why it mixes up a lot more. So um, I, I don't think that things are pigeonholed, not really. And also, I think you know people come to music to be entertained. And some people are entertained by by listening to to David Gaynor, and others are entertained by listening to rock music or to or to going to Soko Loco. I mean, ultimately, um, as the the scene has diversified in Ibiza, um, the, we, we've embraced it, you know. And as I said at, earlier on, uh, the the entertainment sector is is the lifeblood of, of tourism on, on on the island, and as diverse as it can be, as appealing it can, will be to, 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 to a lot more people, you know? Here's, a, here's a good example. Obviously, we've got a thousand kids who stay at the Ibiza Rocks Hotel every week. Obviously, they're there for what we do on a Wednesday with the live bands and then for the DJ stuff that we do on the Friday. But we also sell club tickets, so we've got a really, really good kind of litmus test every week about what people are into. And, you know, they go to our live shows, but they also go to Cream, but they also go to see Jamie Jones. They also go to Ushuaia. They also go to We Love. They really, they're here in Ibiza to, to be given that experience that only probably Ibiza as a music destination island can offer. There really isn't that sort of selective process or that tribalism that goes on anymore. I mean, I mean we're talking about the changing phase of Ibiza, like the, the, the changes that have been happening this year and last year, they're kind of incidental, a club opens, a DJ moves, but mm -hmm. is, has there been a change in the type of person that comes here? in the audience or is it as you've described always been this music island where people come to to enjoy themselves and, and listen to music well the is kind of you know club culture is huge at the minute um you know you see the it's certainly back in back in the uk which is you know where a lot of our audience come from you can see the, the amount of 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 dance festivals that have broken through but you might have the established players like creamfields and global gathering but who would have seen the kind of capacities that Eastern Electrics and those guys are, are putting on this year with what, I mean, we've gone past the idea of underground music, but you know, a different style of, of, of music. So um, it, it's, it, I think just people are coming with a lot more Catholic tastes, you know, people and, can go and see. And also I think people have grown up, you know, a lot of us were here 15, 20 years ago, and we may have been into one thing, and you know, it was talking about San Antonio earlier and how people feed through it. And now it's 20 years down the line, and they have children and they have houses, and you know, they still have a love for the island. Their musical tastes may have developed or grown, but they still enjoy going out, you know, and ultimately it's entertainment that, that, that we're offering. And you know, I think there has been a shift in regards with you know the, the the financial status of some of the clientele that's why the people are selling more vip bottles than ever before there's more tables but they're the same people that were here 15 years ago with a bottle of water and an e in their hand you know so it's just how things have, have evolved and the, the 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 good thing for the island and for all of us is that those people are still coming back and you know there's a whole new generation of clubbers coming through that may be into different genres of music than we're into but they're entertained and they keep coming back and that's what we want for the island. Dave, just before we, we came in here, we were talking about uh, kind of local institutions, the, the Consejo de Ayuntamiento. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd ask me that one. <laughs> Are these local institutions embracing change? Did I say it right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer that question. Uh, but uh, what's your but experience what, then in terms of how, how have you, I mean, do you, do you did you kind well, of... Politically or unpolitically? No, I mean, oh, okay. say what you want, All but right, you okay. can... Um, I think that when we first came to the island two years ago, there was a lot more restriction on the island, and I think that the, the government at that time were restricting things and maybe not helping the industry that we're in grow as, as well as it could flourish. And I think that since there's been a change in the government last year, things have become a little bit more relaxed, a bit more kind of... I think they understand the importance of the nightclub economy to the island and what it does, and there's definitely been a change. And, a lot more of a relaxation of rules and at the same time which helps the, the whole island thrive and I think on a like I was saying to you Gregor I think that this year is a real revolutionary yes maybe not seen since the end of the 90s when the Brits invaded like Ibiza I think this year is going to be a, a massive year for Ibiza. Is it, what, what are you basing that on the, the content or? 
I think the content is absolutely magnificent. What's going on with La Bomba? Well, sorry, Bomba, apologize. Um, what Ashwa is doing, what we're doing, what Pasha's been doing, you know, what everyone's been doing. I think there's a lot of new content, and when there's like fresh few things going on, it, it creates a hype and it creates people to go, hey, let's go to IB, let's check it out. There's all this going on, and it's just going to bring more kind of traffic to the island, which is great for all of us. Sorry, Jan, Jan kind of on the same topic of institutions. I mean, Ushuaia have kind of well, changed the game. The goalposts have completely moved in terms of what, how, how events take place, restrictions, opening times. I mean, mm -hmm. for example, I thought it was 4.30 that clubs could open and you're telling me it's 12 and 2 for, for Dice and um, Pitong. I mean, what, how is that possible? And what's your experience of dealing with these um, <laughs> local institutions? First of all, okay. <laughs> First of all, I think that uh, that the local institutions has, they they really need and they really they really must understand that uh, EDM and uh, all all what we are all doing together uh, is bringing new people and is bringing the people to the island, so that uh, most of the economic power and and the luck that we have to be uh, all living in Ibiza in a, in a kind of bubble, no economic bubble, when you can see that the main uh, main mainland like uh, like Spain or, or other countries of, of of Europe are really in, in big problems. Uh, we are holding this and we are keeping this, this power in Ibiza, uh, big part, uh, if we to don't say all the part, because of uh, the electronic music and the work of all the clubs and, 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 uh, and including the bars and including all the work that we're doing in the island. So I think that institution must help and must, must push and must give facilities and opportunities and must, must help the, the, the private investment to, to, to build new, new, new stuff, new, new thing in, in the island and to develop great concept and, and like Sankey's or like La Bomba or like Destino or like whatever uh, uh, new, uh, well done, I mean well done because you can do a lot of bad things. Uh, wh whatever big and good new well done thing uh, which can help to bring new people uh, in the island is, is welcome for all of us, I think. And, uh, and I think we have all to share and all to work on this to push and to give a, a better product and, and, and uh, a more quality service and better productions uh, 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 to the island to, to, to keep bringing more people to, to this. Ibiza is growing and it has to, it, it must keep growing like this. Mark, um, I know you through IMS being a partner of IMS, you kind of, em the concept of embraced, probably it was one of the first times it ever really happened where they recognized the impact of what was happening here. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about this before you came in, but I mean, do you want to explain what? I mean, I think one of the main reasons w why we were so well embraced by, by, by the Conseil and the, and the local unity mentor is because we offered a neutral platform, but also we weren't a threat to any of the established venues. And, you know, I agree with David was saying that, you know, with the change in, 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 in party, in power, in the, in, it did make things a bit more permissive, but I still think it's quite disjointed. You know, you still have your Junta Mentos and you can have a different set of rules in San Jose compared to Santa Eulara. And, you know, I still think to a degree, a lot of the, the, the power still relies, the political influence lies with your old established power brokers, which are the established clubs. I mean, we're sitting here pretty much to the new face of what's happening in Ibiza, but, you know, we couldn't put the five big club owners together on, this, on the same table because they, they disagree. Um, and they still have a huge amount of influence on the political. So, you know, that influence, yes, it's a foot in the right direction, but I still think that the real future lies when th that power shifts to the new operators, which ultimately are representative of, of the clubbers and the artists. Okay, um, we're going to have some questions in a minute, but before we, um, before we do that, Guy, you, you have your opening party tonight, that's right, isn't it? Who's yeah. playing? Uh, DOP, Sean Rees, uh, Denise Curtel, Midlands, and Cornered Black. I, w I was reading on um, Facebook last month, you put a post up which said something like, um, I'm going to read it. Um, <laughs> The number of haters has increased dramatically lately. I must be doing something great. So who, who was <laughs> hating? And, uh, First, I was. I, it's funny because my, my father asked me like, who, who hates you? And I actually, <laughs> I was exaggerating. But just, just, just I like to write these sentences just to like that. But in general, um, um, name names. So I'm, how to? I think. I think. I think. I'll be honest. When people kiss your ass. It's very awkward because you like guys. I mean, girls know how to take compliments. Guys, they don't know. Like, I mean, what what should I say? When people don't like me, 
I, I have to admit, it's like I shouldn't say it with a gist, but I kind of like, I kind of like it when people are like, you know, you do something, it's like, like if I feel, it, I kind of feel sometimes like, let's say a little bit awkward inside. And when it's awkward for everyone, I just like start to feel comfortable. So, but what's, <laughs> but what's been the basis for them not liking you recently? What? Ah, no, I think, um, uh, I honestly, I was exaggerating. I was just like, I saw this guy, this guy, because imagine sometimes people writing some, um, some stuff, can, we can say even like political stuff, they write something on my Facebook and... Uh, I read that actually. Yeah, like people s write some something and in general I'm a person who reacts. When somebody says something, I react. But going into this is just like, you know, just like, you know, I'm not gonna go into that. And sometimes I have to put like a lot of effort uh, do you really want to start with me this conversation? Because I can, like, I can, yeah, I can, so I really don't want to. But so I just, like, said something that um, um, I think, I think, it's like, what, um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you should do things that not everybody, not everybody likes. To do something that everybody, everybody likes, it's, you know, it's not something that um, usually interests me. And... But honestly, the, okay, to be, I'm honest, yeah, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm very honest. I would say, since we started that thing, we got only support. Everyone, like everywhere I'm going, people are just like so happy about this, you know, they're just like, um, everybody's like really, really, really supportive. Like all the artists, some of them like can't play, but they said, you just can't wait to come and hang out. Uh, everyone, I don't know, everyone being, being supportive, but I think, that's like what I said before. Still, it's just a club where DJs are playing. But just the fact that, you know, someone says, it's not me, I mean, everybody like this, like, let's change. Everybody, hey, yeah, let's change. And people, people, are people, just... people used to hear on Ibiza Rocks when we started. It's like, you can't do that. Why not? You know? So if you believe in it and it comes good, and it's eight years later, still here, still doing all right. So is the, going to be here in another eight years. Is the glove still for sale? I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I came up with a new concept, by the way, because, okay, because it's like, it's like $150,000 glove, so, because it's not going to be that, you know, that spectacular, but the thing is, it costs like that because how it feels inside the glove. <laughs> you can't, when you put it on, it's worth, it's worth it. Like, I mean, you, but you have to, but it's like, you, have, you can get an, it's like only by appointment you can try the glove. But inside, it's worth like every, it's dollars also, it's not euros, it's okay. $150,000. And where does it's the money important. go? Where does the money go? Some of it will go to, first, I don't know who's the, <coughs> they will going to buy it. <laughs> but um, yeah, the money, some of it will go to charity. I'm opening this uh, record company called Charity Records. Um, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's like my second, my second company. Uh, no, some of it, I think half, I can, yeah, we can, half will go to charity, to the real one, and half to the charity records. Okay. Yes, cool. So it's all go to charity, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, on that note, uh, we'll, we'll open up for questions. Who's, uh, who wants to ask any of the panel anything? AD? Virtually almost the same-ish panel as it was six, year, six years ago. Uh, which obviously was the, the highlight of the, the three days. Um, Mark, you said that uh, the five clubs still have the sort of political power, but don't you think now that's sort of almost irrelevant when uh, we're all agreeing that you know, the, the punters are the ones that are now dictating what's going but, on? But not if you're trying to open a club in Ibiza, I assure you. Uh, the competitors still do have some political swing, you know? And it's a fact of the matter. You can have the, the, the best ideas with the best audience, yeah. you know, and, and you're prepared to, to do the right thing. But if your old, your old power base don't support that, they can influence the, the, the politicians and make it difficult, you know. Ultimately, you know, the, the winds of change will, will, will prevail in Ibiza, yeah. but it's not a walk in the park. No, but there's obviously... Uh there's been a huge actual shift from six years ago where virtually, you know, the, the six, seven people on that panel 
absolutely hated each other. Yeah, uh, you um, know, I think what's united <laughs> the the old power base so now in the last few years is opposition, not co not cooperation. Which you know, I'd, is that a positive thing? Well, maybe depends how you, how you view it, but ultimately, it's it you know their intention isn't that of cooperation; it's that of opposition. So you know, it's it's shifting, and I think it, that shift is going to is is going to carry on. But the fact of the matter is that they still do have uh, uh, some influence on on the political institutions. You know, the political parties change every four to eight years. The existing power base has been there for for decades. Anyone else? the government or the authorities treat all of you, all of your clubs equally, do you think? Steve? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have the, um, the Antimiento around at the club all the time, taking photographs and looking at what we're doing. We have to go through the same hoops that everybody else has to go through. It's some kind of fantasy that, I don't know, that Pasha controls Ibiza. It's just not true. I mean, we, um, uh, Destino, it's not been a walk in the park. You know, this has been like a hell of a project to get underway and to get almost finished. <laughs> um, Leo wasn't simple. And anything that you do in this, in this island isn't simple. Because at the end of the day, as, as much as we all want to be kind of rebels and, you know, we're like these flag bearers for this new generation, at the end of the day, this is an island where people live and there is laws and we have to work within them laws. When we don't work within them laws and we go to the villa and we do the after hours at the villa, so these kind of things. But if you have a club and you've got people in that club, you have a responsibility to look after those people, whether you like it or not. You know, there's health and safety issues that you've got to deal with, there's licensing laws that you've got to work with. You know, so we have the same microscope over us as everybody else. And everything that we touch is, 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 has to go through the same process. You put your project in, it goes to committee, it gets either passed or it doesn't get passed. If it doesn't, you have to then put it in again. You have to make changes. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's the same for everyone. I'm sure that um, the thing, uh, Ushuaia wasn't even a walk in the park, and that's Matutis. I mean, he's the king of this island. But I'm sure that it wasn't just, <laughs> oh, I want to do it, go ahead and do it. He's been trying to open up a golf course for the last 25 years. Still isn't there yet. You know, so everyone has to go through the process. Is, is this some some kind of um, friendship in high places, yeah, but ultimately it doesn't get you anything. You know, you have to work within the law, that's it. End of story. The problem we have really, the problem we have is uh, even if the government let, let all the clubs uh, uh, build their stuff and, and, and go on with their business, if the, the proper owner, all the owners of the clubs are denouncing each other uh, all the time, the government has to do something. So <laughs> even if the government let the people go and let the people run their business, and, and the, this, this fight between the clubs don't stop, you will have always denons and you, you, the government has to go against, I against the other I think it's even stuff. fighting between the clubs. I mean, everyone's got a business and everyone looks to protect their business. And that Dave said, you look after what you do. Yep. You know, you um, take care of what your product is and what you're giving to the people and what experience they're going to have, and, and that's it. If everyone else does the same thing and everyone has a great club and they're all packed, we're all really happy. I'm really happy when all the other clubs are packed. I mean, I, just want, I want every club packed. I want the island packed all the time. We all want. And that's just the fact of it. There's no war going on. There's no, like, uh, Mark, you're wars going on with people. I think Danny said it's not North Korea. You know, this is like... Clubbing in Ireland, in, 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 in Ibiza, that's it. We're trying to put the best products together that we can, you know, to, um, to keep our businesses going. It's not a war at all. I think it's pie in the sky, Steve. Um, you know, in fact, the matter is, having been immersed in it, is as much as we would like it to be that level of cooperation, everyone minds their own business and doesn't look what the other man is doing it. Unfortunately, a, a lot of the venues still are really perturbed about what the other one's doing. And that's why they denounce each other or they'll buy a venue just so they can denounce the other or the other one's doing well, they want to do better. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. Not that I know of, but I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But it doesn't really affect, you know, we um, just get, get on with doing our business and working within the law. That's all you gotta do, really. Okay, uh, any more questions?
I'd just like to back up what Mark was saying there. It's only a couple of months ago, Steve, that the owner of Pasha took a page in the Diario stating that he was so fed up with all the other club owners being allowed to do whatever they wanted to do, and if he did anything the slightest bit out of line, he was jumped upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a right to be um, miffed when he sees other things going on, but uh, this is a guy taking a, a commentary to, a pa to the paper. Yes, sir, nada más. I mean, everyone seems to think, you know, Ricardo has like denounced everyone in town. It's not, it's just not the case. He's on the Disco Association. He doesn't own the Disco <coughs> Association at all. And is he upset about other things going on? Sure. So what? It doesn't matter. Well, you still have to work within the law and do and do the, and do what you do within I the th law. Think, That's but what, it. what is going on? What's wrong going on? Why he, he must be upset? Second. Yeah, I think Jan's asking why, 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 why you must be upset. Yeah, what's, what's wrong go, going on? We are all working a lot to bring and to build new stuff in the island and to bring more people and to good, to give more quality and to give better, better production. Why must you be upset? We are going to, we are working to bring people in the island for everybody. Uh, well, he's not happy. I don't know. Um, he sees other things happening that are not within the law, or the law that he has to work within. So, Maybe so that's it, it. Are you saying that it is different for Pasha then? I don't think, think it's different for, for no, Pasha. I think you, everyone you has to like work within the law. That's about it. No, I'm asking you. And you if feel he like sees that there are things that are not, not within the law, he's got a right to complain about that, to, to say it. Do you, but do you feel like you're treated differently? It's like Arsenal and Wenger talking about Manchester United or Chelsea going, they've got more money than I have. It doesn't make any difference. You know, they, <laughs> you know Arsenal and Wenger's having a wine, but he gets on and does his job. Okay. So does Chelsea. Uh, any more questions? Thanks. Yeah, I'd just like to ask the panel uh, if they see that the, there's much of a change recently or any tendencies with regards to a lot of VIP tables coming in with very large expenditures, um, and if that's becoming a uh, more important focus for the club owners and then relatively for the promoters as well, and if that's making a difference in the spirit of Ibiza and in the way people are seeing clubbing. I I think Mark, Mark explained it a bit before. Uh, I think there's a new generation of clubbers, of young clubbers coming in Ibiza, but the, the old, I mean 40, 35, or 45 years old people who were uh, in the world of EDM a, a, a few years ago, 20 years ago, are still going out. Uh, now they, they, they studied, now they are working, now they have money, and, and, and they still want to party. So, so they're, they're coming with, with a different level of uh, acquisition. So, so there we have a lot of, of new VIPs. And then I think we give him... We, we're giving now a better production. We, we're taking a, a, a bit more care about uh, this kind of, uh, of sector, of VIP sector. And I think that they are getting in worldwide because EDM is growing and growing. So they are getting in worldwide uh, in, in this industry. F for this, we have more, more VIP in the island. You know, I also think the, the concept of the VIP tables, if anything, it breaks down more barriers, you know, because you know, the, 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 the hype and the success of a night is built around the dance floor. VIPs won't flock to, uh, to a nightclub if there's nobody on the dance floor. And uh, it's one of the things that I love most about Chai is, you know, you can have uh, a, an Arab billionaire dancing five meters away from a bricklayer from, from Blackpool, you know, and they, they're united by the groove, they're having a great time, and, you know, if anything, it's breaking down those barriers between the rich and the poor and you know those that are paying 150 euros for the drink and those that have got a drink ticket for it so you know i think it's a culture that should be embraced it has been embraced and it's good for the local businesses you know ultimately it's not just about the clubs it's the restaurants the hotels the concierge it's all the businesses benefit by having more money coming to the island yep. Yep. um we've got time for one more question if anyone's got one no well, um, I'd just like to say good luck to all the panel for the upcoming season and uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.